Hello, this is Gray Hughes. Today I'll be discussing the Kanika Jenkins case again. This time will be about topiramate, the thymus, and the nefarious chip tooth. Okay, I think there are reasonable explanations for all of them. Okay, I, I, the chip tooth is not a chip tooth. That one I can prove fact, factually. The, um, the thymus can easily be explained, okay? And the topiramate, uh, I thought I would discuss some, you know, what I see, and I think it's, you know, interesting, actually. All right, so if you look at the autopsy, Kanika's topiramate level is 3,000 nanograms per milliliter. All right, and then if you read down here, uh, a description of topiramate that was also included in the autopsy, it says, Tupiramate is an anti-convulsant drug with central nervous system depressant effects. The majority of epileptic patients taking 200 to 400 milligrams of topiramate daily, so they take it every day, had the average, you know, through serum topiramate concentration, so meaning that in their, basically in their blood, the topiramate concentration between 2,400 and 8,000 nanograms per milliliter. So if you look up here, she had 3,000. So she fits right inside that range. You know, a little bit above the low uh, end of that range. And if you look at that, that, this actually means that people who take it regularly, daily, so 200 to 400 milligrams of topiramate daily had an average concentration of topiramate in their blood of 2400 to 8000 nanograms per milliliter so the amount that she had is consistent with somebody who takes it daily um, over time creating that concentration now i don't know if by you know if she took it a one took it one time and hypothermia or whatever created a higher level but it appears that you would only get that level if you took it over time. Okay, now if you look here, it says topiramate may also be used as a treatment for migraines, 25 to 100 milligrams daily, which is far less than what an epileptic patient would take of 200 to 400. So you can assume that if you only took 25 to 100 for migraines, it would be far less than 2400 to 8000 nanograms per milliliter. And uh, let's see. And if you're using it for weight loss, it's 23 to 92 milligrams daily is what you would take. And that, again, is a lot smaller than 200 to 400. But, you know, I guess since if you took 200, it's possibly higher. And maybe if you took 100 here, you might possibly be at 2400. You know, you could still get a reading around that. You know, but hers was 3,000. So that sort of suggests that she took it regularly, um, but that's just the way I'm interpreting this. It says, you know, again, if you took 200 to 400 milligrams of topiramate daily, your average blood, you know, serum concentration would be 2,400 to 8,000 nanograms per milliliter, and she fits within that range, okay? Now, if you combine that with alcohol, because she had a full dose in her system, and it wasn't... Um, early on, I did did the math and said 3,000 nanograms, it's 0 0.003 milligrams, and it seemed like, oh, okay, it's such a small amount. But in reality, her concentration is that of an epileptic patient. She had 3,000, and 2,400 is to 8,000 is what the concentration typically is. Now, if you combine that with alcohol, I would imagine you would get some of the sort of side effects of like almost like an overdose side effects and if you can look right here you see dizziness poor coordination um, those are things you all see in those her walk through on the surveillance okay now let's see what uh, dr oz said about this same thing let me show you this video again of her stumbling through the hall. Right? 
some of you probably have had a little too much alcohol. 0.112 does not do this to you. That's not what 0.112 alcohol looks like. If topiramate was mixed with alcohol, but changes it. Because topiramate with alcohol can cause sleepiness, dizziness, slow motor skills, you can blur your vision, you can pass out. Lots of things can happen that most folks would never know, and you're never supposed to put them together. So we also found it could be used off-label for weight loss. Your daughter looked very trim. Did she ever take weight loss? No. Like she, this? No, she was trying to gain weight, if anything. I was it doesn't seem like she would actually be trying to gain weight. I was just looking at, thinking about that for a second. Um, she weighs 159 pounds and is 5'6". And I think sort of like the an average female at 5'6 would weigh between, you know, maybe 125 and 145, okay? I, am, I don't know if 159 makes sense to say that if anything, she's trying to gain weight, all right? Um, but, you know, I guess it's possible, you know what I mean? All right, so now let's talk about the thymus, all right? I, I see on the autopsy where it says the thymus is not identified, all right? Well, does that mean it's missing? I mean, that's what people seem to think, is that somehow it was surgically removed while Kanika was lying in the freezer. Okay, do you see any evidence of that at all when you look at her? She looks to me, when they found her, that she was sort of in a burrowing mode, you know, almost in fetal position. Her hands kind of clutched underneath her chin, and she was lying there, and eventually she you know, basically died of hypothermia, okay? But her face to me looks peaceful. I know some people say, oh, she looks really angry, but I just don't see that at all, okay? And it's not because of a bias. I just don't see that in her face when I look at it. All right, so the thymus is not identified. But if you just look up on Google, as a matter of fact, on, here's one, endocrine website or web, it says the thymus gland located behind your sternum and between your lungs is only active until puberty. Okay, now puberty, puberty lasts between two and five years for some people. Now, maybe between, so I think females sometimes between 10 or 11, 12 to 16 years old, something like that. Okay, but, you know, it's two to five years. So, you know, puberty could be over for some by the age of, 13 or 14 and then after after puberty the thymus starts to slowly shrink and become replaced by fat okay so in this case he probably just didn't see it you know covered by fat all right so it doesn't mean it was gone or taken out it just means he wasn't able to see it because after the puberty it starts to go away and you don't see it anymore it's actually a, an immune system uh, when you're younger, it, it starts building up your immune system, and then your body switches over to a different uh, source of it at some point using your, I think, your um, lymph nodes at some point. But I'm not a doctor, so don't quote me on any of this stuff, okay? I'm just saying I'm reading what it says on a respected website right here. And it's not something I just invented. I actually know doctors. I asked them that question. And they said, well, in the autopsy, they said they couldn't find the, the thymus. And then the doctor asked me, well, how old is she? And I said, 19. He goes, oh, well, yeah. Because it only it, after puberty, it starts disintegrating and being covered with fat and just kind of eventually sort of is absorbed into your system. All right. So... That explains the thymus. That's an explanation. Now, if you want to believe it was somehow removed as some sort of an elaborate plot of organ harvesting, feel free to do so. But I think this has a much better explanation. All right. So let's now move on to the chip tooth. Okay, now I use Poser Pro a lot. Um, Here's a, some creature that I use for just goofing around, making uh, animations and so forth. Uh, see, he looks like a, uh, I don't know, some sort of a cave troll. 
and here's a skeleton figure and so forth and kind of a crazy looking character right there but uh, let's see let me go back to the I'm not even sure how to get back to the uh, oh there it is okay so here is the face we're going to use for this now I have this magnet set up here because I'm going to shift over her lips and if you look at the image that people think they see a chipped tooth in her lips are actually shifted over to her left so in on screen to the right okay so if i'm gonna i'm gonna grab the magnet here that i've already set up just to do this and if you move it over about like this that's about how kanika's lips are now if you just were to look at that straight on you'd say wow look at her left front tooth is chipped okay and that's exactly what people are seeing so you rotate it a little bit like this like the image and they see that and they see that little gap in there and they say her, her tooth is chipped when in reality her right front tooth is right there and her left front tooth is right here okay i mean i can even zoom in further let's do this all right so this is her right front tooth and this is her left front tooth and if we were just to move back that magnet that would be what it would normally look like okay and then it would be pretty obvious you know straight down from the nose the center of the lip and you can see it all right but instead her lips were like this they were moved over uh, they were in that position when you know because she died on her side and the gravity of her mouth and lips sort of uh, you know hung down there a little bit and that's the you know the way that they were the way she was found okay and her nose was even a little bit over too uh, my magnet pulls it over a little bit okay but I, I think she was about about like this okay so again if you looked at that you might think okay here's the center of her lip okay this must be the center and that's the left front tooth and wow look at it, it's chipped but in reality it's not chipped okay it just isn't and I've seen this over and over and over again and people use it almost as their um, their one factual piece of information that proves that this was a murder okay but in reality her tooth isn't chipped her thymus isn't missing and she did have a high concentration of tupirmate in her system equivalent to someone who's epileptic and who regularly takes either a 200 to 400 milligram tablet okay so i hope this helped uh explain some things to people and until next time i will talk to you later